Now, the question before the house today is, what is classical music? Uh, anybody knows that that piece of handle we just played is classical music, for instance, right? Right. So, what's the problem? Why are we asking this question? Well, there's a good reason, as we're going to find out today. You see, everybody thinks he knows what classical music is. Just any music that isn't jazz, like a Stan Kenton arrangement, or a popular song like I Can't Give You Anything But Love, Baby, or folk music like an African war dance, or Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star. But that isn't what classical music means at all. People use this word to describe music that isn't jazz or popular songs or folk music just because there isn't any other word that seems to describe it better. All the other words that are used are just as wrong, like good music, for instance. You've all heard people say, I just love good music, meaning that they love Handel instead of Spike Jones. Well, you know what they mean. But after all, isn't there such a thing as good jazz or a good popular song? So you can't use the word good to describe the difference. There's good Handel, there's good Spike Jones, but we'll just have to forget that word. Then people use the word serious music when they mean Handel or Beethoven. But there again, there's some jazz that's very serious. And heavens, what's more serious than an African war dance when the kettle is boiling? So that word's no good either. Then some people use the word highbrow which means that only very smart, well-educated people can dig it. But we know that's wrong because we all know a lot of people who aren't exactly Einsteins who dig Beethoven the most. Well, what about the word art music? Now, there's a word that a lot of people use to try to describe the difference between Beethoven and Dave Brubeck, let's say. That's no good either. Because just as many other people think that jazz is also an art, which indeed it is. And if we try to use the word symphony music, well, that leaves out all the music written for piano solo and violin solo and string quartet, and certainly all that's supposed to be classical music. Maybe the best word invented so far is, of all things, long hair, because it was made up by jazz musicians themselves to nail down all the kinds of music that aren't properly theirs. But we've all seen enough jazz musicians who have long hair on their own heads, so I guess even that word won't do. Well, since all these words are wrong, let's try to find one that's right by finding out first what the real difference is between the different kinds of music. And the real difference is that when a composer writes a piece of what's usually called classical music, he puts down the exact notes that he wants, the exact instruments or voices that he wants to sing those notes, even to the exact number of instruments or voices. And he also writes down as many directions as he can think of to tell the players or singers as carefully as he can everything they need to know about how fast or slow it should go, how loud or soft it should be, and millions of other things to help the performers give an exact performance of those notes he thought up. Of course, no performance can be perfectly exact because there aren't enough words in the world to tell the performers everything they have to know about what the composer wanted. But that's just what makes the performer's job so exciting, to try and find out from what the composer did write down as exactly as possible what he meant. Now, of course, performers are only human. And so they always figure it out a little differently from one another. For instance, one conductor might decide that the beginning of Beethoven's Fifth Symphony, which I'm sure you all know, do you know how it goes? Sing it to me. Right, you haven't got the right key, but anyway, that's how it goes. Well, let's say one conductor decides that those four notes should get a big extra bang on the last note, the, the long one, like this. And then another conductor who's trying just as hard as the first one to figure out what Beethoven really wanted 
might feel that it's the first note of those four that should get the strongest accent, like this. Then still another conductor, maybe not quite so faithful to Beethoven as these first two, might decide that the four notes should be played more importantly, slower, and more majestically, like this. We've all heard that version of it. But in spite of these differences, which come out of the different personalities of these three conductors, they're still all conducting the same notes, in the same rhythm, with the same instruments, and with the same purpose, which is to make Beethoven's printed notes come to life in the way they think he'd want them to. This means that what people call classical music can't be changed except by the personality of the composer. This music is permanent, unchangeable, exact. Now there's a good word, exact. Maybe that's what we should call this kind of music instead of classical. We should call it exact music because there's only one way it can be played and that way has been told us by the composer himself. But, on the other hand, if we take a popular song like, oh, for instance, I Can't Give You Anything But Love, Baby, there's no end to the ways in which it can be played. It can be sung by a chorus, or by Louis Armstrong, or by Maria Callas, or by nobody. It can just be played without any words, by a jazz band, or a symphony orchestra, or a kazoo, slow or fast, hot or sentimental, loud or soft, it just doesn't matter. It can be played through once or repeated 15 times in any key, even with the chords underneath changed. Even the tune itself can be changed and improvised on and fooled around with. For instance, the way the tune goes on the printed sheet music is like this. Pretty dull, isn't it? But when Louis Armstrong sings it, then it begins to sound something like this. I can't give you anything but love. <laughs> baby, baby, baby. That's the only thing I plenty of. <laughs> or, or if a, a cool, progressive cat is playing it on the piano, in Birdland, it might sound something like this. Almost unrecognizable. Or if it were sung by, let's say, the Fred Waring Glee Club, it would have a completely different sound. It would go something like, I can't give you any But the main thing about all this is that none of those ways is wrong. Each way seems right for those particular performers who are doing it at the time, and right for the particular occasion at which they're doing it, whether it's for dancing or on a television show or at Birdland. There isn't any one way it has to be done, which means that it's not exact music. It doesn't have to be done exactly the way the composer wrote it. In fact, what's even more important is that popular songs definitely should not be done the way the composer wrote it, the same way all the time. Just imagine how deadly dull it would be if the only way you ever heard I Can't Give You Anything But Love was the way the sheet music reads. It would be awful. And the same thing goes for folk music, too. It can and should change with each performer. Of course, there's even more reason for changing folk music because there never was any composer at all to lay down the law about how it should go. And as far as jazz is concerned, well, of course it changes all the time because that's what jazz is all about, improvising, making the music up as you go along, and hardly ever even bothering to write it down. 
So at last we now have a better word for classical music, which is exact music. And while there may be even a better word for it, which I can't think of at the moment, at least exact is not a wrong word, and classical is a wrong word. As a matter of fact, I'm sure that you can all probably think up a lot of other words better than exact to describe the music that's usually called classical, and I'd love for you to write me any of the ones you think of that are really good. Who knows, maybe one of them might catch on and become part of our language someday, so we'll never have to use that wrong word classical again. But why is the word classical a wrong word? Because, you see, while it's true that there is such a thing as classical music, it means something very different from what we've been talking about. It does not mean long hair music. It means only one certain kind of long hair music. For instance, take this well-known musical phrase. You know what that is? What? Let's hear it. Right, Sharazad. Okay, next question. Is that classical music? Wrong. It's not. Classical music refers to a very definite period in the history of music which is called the classical period. And the music that was written in that time is called classical music. And Scheherazade simply wasn't written in that time. But this music was. I'm sure you can tell the difference between Scheherazade and that bit of Mozart we just played. The Mozart is classical music. Now, let's see if we can get some idea of just when this classical period happened. It lasted about 100 years, from about 1700 to 1800, which is, as you know, called the 18th century. Now, what do we know about this 18th century? Well, let's take the first half of it, for instance, the first 50 years. We've all learned in school what America was like during those years. It was still being settled. Pioneers were exploring new savage territories in our land. There were new frontiers all over the place. We were fighting Indians right and left. In other words, we were going through a tough time, living a rough life, and building a new country from the ground up. Now, the same time in Europe was very different. Over there, we find a nice old civilization that had been building up for hundreds of years. So by the time the 18th century rolled around, Europe wasn't any longer just exploring and nailing logs together. It was trying to make perfect what it had already built up. So these same first 50 years in Europe were a time of rules and regulations and of getting those rules and regulations to be as exactly right as possible. This is what makes classicism this bringing of rules to a pitch of perfection. It makes classical architecture, classical drama, and classical music. And that's what classical music really means. Music written in a time when perfect form and balance and proportion are what everybody's looking for. Music which tries more than anything else to have a perfect shape, like a beautiful ancient Greek vase. 